Good evening and welcome to Points of Interest. Tonight we've got a missing host. Josh Elmer has been taken away by the aliens. <laughs> <laughs> and never to return. There you go. Tonight my co-host is... Yeah. Eva. And I'm Terry Lee. Otherwise and known as Lefty Utah. There you go. <laughs> For all you that are listening... Our special guest tonight is a man by the name of Christopher Johansson, and he is a well-acclaimed psychic medium. We'll be bringing him on in just a few minutes. Uh, Eva was the one that booked this one, and so she kind of has been following him around on Facebook, and needless to say, she thought he was real entertaining, which now Josh and I are also following him, so this ought to be a really good show. Now, before we begin, I wanted to get out there for everyone that is in the Salt Lake or surrounding area, our event that is this Saturday night. Eva, do you want to tell them about that? Yeah, we're going to the Rio Grande. The cost is $20 per person. Um, the investigation will start at 8 o'clock and at midnight. So if anybody would like to join us, go online on Facebook and check out the events for this sa Saturday and come join us. Terrific. And how many people are you going to allow to attend this event? So I do know that I do know that the area is very large. So are we anywhere near capacity at this point? No, I think we can probably allow another uh, six or eight people. Okay, so those lucky six or eight people get a hunt with some seasoned investigators. Doesn't mean you have to be a seasoned investigator. Um, but you will have all the fancy bells and whistles as far as equipment goes and be able to hunt with some uh, actual investigators that have done this for multiple years. So that's kind of cool. Um, what else have we got coming up on this schedule that they might want to know about? In September, we've got Camp Floyd. Uh, I can't recall the date, like the 17th, somewhere around that date. or No, probably closer to the 28th or something like that. But anyway, that's also on an event. If you go in towards September, you can find that. The cost on that one is $25 a person. Um, it starts, I can't recall, 7 or 8 o'clock. Okay, and, and where is that at? Where that's is in Fairview, okay. Utah. And that is out past, past Tooele, Tooele in Rush Valley. So I guess that's where you would probably use your Google to find out exactly how to get there. The address is on the on the event for anybody that wants to go. Fantastic. Now, what what do you know about this? Um, Chris that's going to be on with us tonight. Do you know much of anything? I don't know a lot. I know he's a psychic medium first. Um, then he also used to be part of a team, I believe. I, uh, he might even still be part of a t paranormal team. He also does a show on uh, a TV show I believe, and I, if I remember right, I think he does a little bit of writing. I, I'm not too sure about that part. But uh, first, he's a psychic medium. That's so he first. sounds like he's pretty well-rounded then in the paranormal field. Oh, yeah, yeah. He knows about the paranormal field also. Well, fantastic. Well, let's go ahead and Skype him in, and we'll begin the show. Jeopardy theme or something here. Yeah. Hello. Hey, Chris. Welcome to the show. Thank this, you very much. This is How's Terry. everybody tonight? Oh, we're fantastic. This is Terry Lee speaking to you, and I've got Eva joining us tonight. Our leader has been kidnapped by aliens. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, now that you're on this show, 
Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what exactly do you do within the paranormal field? Oh my goodness. Uh, well, yeah, my name is Chris. I, uh, I am a psychic medium. I am the founder of Casper Paranormal Research. I am the host and I will say co-host because my uh, co-host Angelo uh, co-hosts with me, hence the word co-host. Um, and that's the Casper Paranormal View. We have a live video uh, show every Monday, uh, except on the summer, which is every other Monday, so we can roam around Long Island. Um, I've been doing paranormal for many, many years, very involved in it. We do a lot of research on the island. We're very skeptical. Uh, we go on a skeptic type of uh, attitude when we do our investigations. Okay, and where can they find your web page? Can you give everyone your your address for your web page? Sure, you can uh, you can look at my web page at casperparanormalresearch.com. That easy, uh, and that will give you a link also to the Facebook page, uh, to my Twitter page, to Google Plus, to uh, everything. Okay, fantastic. And we'll also be putting that link up on TIPA Online as well. Um, you'll be able to find direct access to Chris's website from ours as well. Okay, so what got you into the psychic medium part of your paranormal experience? Uh, well, I was a very heavily medicated child. Oh, I'm just kidding. Um, no, I, uh, my whole... My whole family, my, my, my whole family was into it. I remember uh, going to a restaurant here on the island and my mom walking through the cemetery before we went to go eat. Um, and it was the things in my house. Ever since I was like eight years old, um, I would, you know, see things out of the corner of my eye and I'd think nothing of it. And, and then I would start seeing them more and more and more. And uh, from then on, I was very much into the paranormal. Did a lot of uh, astral projection when I was a child uh, until life and stress got to me and kind of changed things around. But that's how it all started from there. And then it never, it never stopped, really. So you grew up in a very accepting family then that kind of uh, knew what you were dealing with and didn't dismiss your experiences? Well, I got to tell you, um, my great grandmother did it my grandmother did it my aunts did it my 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 dad i only found out last year did it um but i i won't necessarily say they were accepting they really didn't know anything about it i i do remember um as a child uh a relative uh that was staying with us had a minister come into our house and bless the room because the dolls were moving around and oh, wow. i always thought you know hey, this isn't right. I think there's something going on here that's a little odd. Um, never did I believe the story, uh, because I am a skeptic, but I did still think it was odd. But, yeah, my family is into the paranormal, still is. Well, that that's, uh, that's kind of interesting. That's kind of backwards from most of the stories that we hear out there. Generally, it's your family that kind of shuns what you're feeling, seeing, and hearing. Um, and so I'm kind of glad that they were a little bit not, you know, too, too shunning of your experiences. So uh, you literally have been doing this your entire life. What are your capabilities as far as a psychic goes? Well, I, I am a third generation psychic medium. I've, uh, my great grandmother, like I said, my grandmother's done it. Uh, my aunts actually still do it. Um, what I do is I read people's energy, and I also read the energy of people who have passed. And something that has have happened over the last year, I would say, is I can also read people that are alive as though they are past. For instance, you know, you're driving in the car on the way here, and you're talking to somebody that's with you in the car or on the phone. I can pretty much tell them the conversation they have. I just did one the other night, and they had the conversation outside waiting for me to come out and get them about having a pedicure. I brought that up in the reading. I said, listen, um, 
I, I believe that you guys were talking about a pedicure before. Um, and they looked at each other, just started cracking up. So we just said it. I said, yeah, I told you that's what happens. That, you know, and that, that's what I do now. That, and it gets stronger as I get older. I mean, I'm like 150 now, I think. So um, <laughs> the, the stronger, the older you get, the stronger it seems to be. I, I, that's, that's how I feel anyway. Well, that, that's really impressive that you're not a, only able to gain um, information about deceased spirit, but you're also able to get them off of live humans. And that's, that's kind of a gift in itself, I would imagine. Uh, yeah, I, I, I find it all kind of odd, to tell you the truth, but it does work. I, I, I don't know how. Uh, anybody that says it work, they work, they understand it. I, I, I can't imagine them actually understanding it. Because yeah. I no, I don't. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, for all my for all the people that uh, I'm trying to get them to link onto the show, it's not point of interest link. It's it's the Tippa link. Yeah, it's www.tipparesearch.com. When you get to the home page, if they want to join us in chat, go ahead and click the chat link and type their name in there. Okay, I was just. Uh, trying to find it on Facebook first so I can uh, go ahead and, and, and give it to everybody that didn't want to watch the show tonight. Hey, anyway, um, so Chris, I have, a, Chris? I have a few paranormal stories that we have dealt with. Um, for instance, about seeing shadows and demons and all those wonderful things that everybody says that exists out there. What, what separates me from a lot of these um, psychic mediums and things like that, I, I do want to just I just want to put a plug out there to uh, to a good friend of ours, Sydney Sherman, who just came out with a book called Gifted Innocence, um, and she's she's a good friend of ours. Uh, my story is in the book um, that she published, and and that's about how I grew up and and living with paranormal and things like that. One of the experiences that I, I, I had is I used to have reoccurring dreams. Now, as I said, I did astral projection, and I used to have these very vivid dreams. And one of them was about a good friend of mine who I grew up. Everybody had that childhood friend who they grew up with and wondered where they were when they all grew up, right? So I had this dream about my friend John, and it was for about three years. And he was always knocking on the back of a school bus door. and, and trying to wave to me, get my attention. And every single night I would have this dream. I'd wake up, I'm like, what's going on with that? And then i dismiss it. And finally I found his sister on a, um, a social network, which we all know. I'm not going to bother giving him any uh, kudos. <laughs> but anyway, I, I found him and I said, listen, I have been having dreams about your brother for the last three years. I've been trying to hold him, I've been trying to find him. And she says... Uh, you know, OMG, um, John had died three years ago. Oh, I'm wow. sorry, I thought you knew. Wow. And uh, it really took me back. And the clincher is that, see, John, uh, all he was trying to do was kind of get my attention to say goodbye. But his mother, the school bus, was always parked in front of his mother's house. She was a school bus driver. And we used to always, like, talk about the school bus. And that was his confirmation to me that he was there saying goodbye i've never had that dream since wow so so are you finding that information comes to you um before their passing or is this something that generally occurs shortly thereafter well being a, oh, my cat's flipping out over here uh being a psychic medium it, it, they don't have to be passed at all i i can actually read energy about as far back as when you were five years old up until what's going to happen tomorrow. Okay, uh, so when you um, talk about energy, are you talking about auras or are you talking about physical energy that you see I am, radiating I am, from them? I am talking about physical energy. I am talking about energy that's inside you that you don't even know is there in your subconscious. Things that you hold on to. People that, I, I, I'll put it this way. I've told people things that they did not real that forgot 18 years old 17 years old and they were like oh my god i i cannot believe that you even brought that up i totally forgot all about that that energy still resides within them wow 
So you're you're actually my first um, psychic medium that I've spoken to with this particular gift of being able um, to bring up information on people that are still living um, from past occurrences or things that they may have long since forgot. So that must be an awesome oh, gift. I've also told people, you know, not not to be. Is this a family show? By the way, uh, uh, just no. let her go. <laughs> We're I, all laid back here. I've, I've told people, you know, oh, by the way, um, you know, you've cheated on your husband. And they're like, like no, I haven't cheated on my husband. I've been like, really? Uh, yeah, you have cheated on your husband. Finally, after, you know, arguing with them, because I do. I, I'm one of those psychics and mediums who will argue the fact because I know the, what's coming to me is real. And then finally, they'll admit it or I'll tell them that they had a threesome. Nobody knows they had a threesome. Um, I've told them their place of employment the actual name of the place uh, while they're still alive. That's the psychic part. Now, psychic and medium, they tend to cross over when I do a reading. I always seem to look away when I do a medium reading, and when I'm doing a psychic reading, I tend to look right at them. I don't know why that is. That's just the way it is. Okay, so um, now if you want to kind of elaborate on some of the personal um, – cases or people that you've worked on, you know, I mean, obviously you're not going to call them out by name, but if you could walk us through maybe one of your past readings that you've had that were actually um, verified as authentic by the person being given the reading. I can actually do one and I can say the name at the same time because she gave me permission to be able to do so. Okay. Um, I had read, and she only gave me the permission to do so because it's already, if you go to CosmoParanormalResearch.com and read the testimonials, you can see a lot of the testimonials, that part of the reading is in it. Um, so you'll be able to see that too. But this girl, Carrie, that I read, her daughter uh, died well before she was supposed to, uh, in her 20s. She came to me on her way in, she came to me and said to her daughter-in-law, if he comes up with Pam's nickname, then I'll believe this guy's real. Now, Carrie didn't know who I was, and this was her first reading with me. So I, I sat there, and, you know, my readings are an hour long, and we're into the reading, and I'm telling her all this stuff. And I said to her, I said, oh, I see that you have three tattoos. Now, I didn't see any of them. I'm just telling her what I feel, what I feel. And uh, she said, no, I have two. And I said, no, you have three. And she argued back and forth with me, of course, so, as we do. And, you know, we're from New York. We argue with everyone. <laughs> and um, so, so she said, no, I have two. I said, listen, if you want to argue with me, fine. I'm telling you, Pam says you have three. And she looked at me. She goes, she looked right at her, uh, her daughter-in-law. She goes, don't you ever tell anyone. And she picked up her leg and she showed this tattoo of a guy named Lou. And I looked at her and I said, Pam says you're a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> well, to, to, to top off the reading, that was the nickname that was supposed to come up. Oh, wow. Yeah, that her, her daughter had a relationship with her mother where I at one time had the relationship with my mom. I would, I would say something like that to my mom and you're a dumbass you know joking around um but yeah that's that was the nickname that she was looking for and she just opened her mouth and they both looked at each other and it's like oh my god well since then um i have been speak i spoke to carrie at least five times since then now i've had a lot of readings very similar to that um to where um a i i won't i won't mention the name on this one although she is on my website uh, her daughter was dying of cancer, very Christian woman. She was ready to take her life. She was at the end of her rope. So I, of course, she was following Casper on Facebook, and she was telling me, I'm, I'm done. She didn't tell me why. So I said, call me, and I'll talk to you. I gave her a free reading, and I read about her daughter, and, and, and I, her daughter was dying of cancer, and I went through the whole thing with her. And I said, by the way, I just want you to know, 
your daughter is telling me that she wants a sandwich. Now, to me, that is absolutely absurd. And I don't know why uh, anyone that passed wants a sandwich. Um, although I'm really kind of hungry for one myself. But anyway, the whole thing was is because they were Christian people, they would roll a certain something to make her daughter's cancer feel better. The nickname they used for that was a sandwich. So, but I didn't know that. And her mother started crying. I'm like, what did I say? I said a sandwich for God. Like, what, what does that mean? But that was the nickname. They called it a sandwich when they wanted her, her mother to get her that special something to make the pain go away when she had the cancer before she passed. Wow. That's confirmation. Yeah, and you, you've got to love that for your own personal self to hear such validation. Um, I, I, I have one more. I'm sorry. I like to talk. Sure, um, go for it. That's, that's the reason I have my own show, so I can just take it over. <laughs> um, there you go. <laughs> but I, I also did one not that long ago, and uh, uh, again, I will not mention the name, but a gentleman came in totally a skeptic. His, his girlfriend came in, she was not a skeptic, but um, he came, he decided last minute. He, he was the one with issues. So apparently everything came through. His grandfather came through. And his grandfather was talking to me, uh, um, and his grandfather said, do me a favor, tell him about the railroad. Tell him railroad tracks. So I said to this guy, I said, listen, I know you're a skeptic, you don't believe, but the grandfather's coming to me and he's mentioning the railroad tracks. And he's like, what the, uh, and that would be F-U apostrophe, you know, all those little things. Uh -huh. okay. You know, I wouldn't say the word. Um, it turns out that um, his grandfather was vice president of the Long Island Railroad. And uh, all his family were very high up in the railroad. And that's why the railroad tracks came in. It was confirmation saying that his grandfather was there. Uh, to help him try to get back on track with his life that was very dysfunctional at the time of the reading. Wow. And it goes much deeper than that. It's 28 pages long, the, the reading. Because I, I record my readings and then now I have them transcribed into text. Oh, that's so, awesome. Yeah, it's, and it's, you know, I go back and I, I, I read them. And even reading, the, I go back and read the testimonials because, um, what, what might be different for me than others, too, because I don't really speak to a lot of psychic mediums, but I don't really remember their readings too much after. These are the only ones that are really compelling that I remember, but I don't remember a lot of the readings after they're done. Like When they walk out of the room, I pretty much forget them. Yeah, are, so is that kind of what you do when you're when you're going to a reading, you're tapping into it, when you're leaving a reading, you try to leave all of that behind you so that you're not over inundated with thoughts and feelings and... Well, it, it's funny because all these people that I see are, um, like, I hear about these psychic mediums in their meditation room and this and that and they're, they're praying before this and I'm like, Really? I don't. I never took a course in this. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I, I'm not going to go and 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 do any. I, I don't meditate. I don't. I don't. I, I. You know what? I'm. I'm. I was told by somebody that I believe that I meditate without knowing it. Well, so yeah. I, because I was born with it, and that I've been doing it for a long time, and I'm, and it sort of came natural to me. I think that I sort of just push it away subconsciously. I don't do it on purpose and I don't try to tune into it before it. Matter of fact, before it, I'm extremely um, nervous and my stomach is in knots before a reading because I, I, I have to keep this expectation up of the people that are coming to me. I, I don't want to let anybody. Mm -hmm. So, um, so how, how uh, in tuned are you in utilizing your psychic abilities um, with your paranormal investigations? I, I mean, are they in the process of bringing in that information to you as you're arriving to a place, or is this something that you arbitrarily pick up as you are inside the location, or how does that work with you? Well, I gotta tell you on a few things. I was working on a murder investigation in Queens. And while working on this murder investigation in Queens, we were driving around, my partner Angelo and I, 
And we were driving around and I'm like, you know what? No, you need to turn here. You need to turn here, down here. And uh, we, we said that we have to find this building that's all boarded up and it's a, and a certain color. And we went down the block, we went down to the store and there was that building. We both got out, we walked into the store. I knew the, I knew the guy that we needed to see. I described him before we went there. Um, and sure enough, inside that store, that person fit that description. Um, of course, uh, we were in the newspaper about it, this and that. But you know what? The, the police didn't want to have anything to do with crazy nut psychics. Uh, so they sort of backed away from it. Uh, but yeah, we, sometimes I tune into it. Very rarely will I even pay attention. Like, I don't go to a reading or a paranormal investigation with a list of names or anticipation of any kind. I, I don't have an anticipation or anticipate anything happening before I sit in front of the person. I, I don't know what's going to happen before I, the person. It just, it just comes to me. That's it. Well, and sometimes that, that, that's part of the experience is because you actually get to do it in real time with the real people or real spirits. So, yeah, I can kind of see where that would be kind of a better program than channeling into it days before and, and you know, anticipation and have all the history in front of you so that you know the names and, and stuff like that. So, yeah, I can see that that theory behind um, either a reading or an investigation would be profitable on your behalf. Yeah, and, and you know what? I, I've come up with exact names and all that other stuff, and... I don't understand how somebody days before meeting somebody is going, can pull out their energy even before they talk to them. I, uh, to me, like I said, I'm a skeptic. I, you know, I've never been read by a psychic medium really. I, 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 I just, there's just so much I don't believe in. I just know what I do and how I do it. I don't have a clue. So therefore, I'm, I, 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 people tell me they do that. I'm like, really? Really, I, I, okay, whatever you say. Uh, but is, is there a reason why you don't? Grasp that uh, whole concept of uh, writing down a list of 30 names, standing on a stage and saying, uh, George here, is there a Sam? Anybody with a Pete? You know, I, any, it, that's profiling to me. Okay. Is, it, is there a reason why you don't uh, have a reading on yourself? Is there a reading? No, I didn't say I don't want a reading on myself. No. I've, I've had tarot card readings on myself. And I got to tell you, there's a girl named Anu who um, did tarot card readings on my show who was spot on. Um, but it's, 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 um, how do you want to say, uh, to the surface uh, of a, you know what I'm saying? It, it's, it's not totally in depth. Of my what, of my life. No one has been able to touch what's in my soul. Um, Maria Mas is another one who is an extremely good tarot card reader, angel card reader. Um, Janet Grace, another one. But I, I got to tell you, they they they're very very proficient at what they do. They're just different from what I do. I'm not better than them. They're not better than me. They're just it's different. Different. Just different, right? So um, walk me through one of your investigations that might have yielded probably your most profound experience, marrying the two with psychic ability as well as paranormal investigator. I was in an apartment complex um, not too far from where I am now, and I was doing a paranormal investigation. And uh, we had all our meters going and all that other fun stuff. And um, I, I, I became very silent. And I was like, you know what? Um, this, this isn't the time to do this right now. And Angelo, my partner, is like, why? What, what's going on? And I'm like, I just feel a lot of negative energy right now. And actually, what I see is not something that should be when the owner's in the house. I think they should be out of the house if we're going to do something like this. I don't believe in demons or devils. I, that's not something I believe in. I don't believe they exist. 
Uh, but I do believe in very negative energy. And I didn't think it was a place for the um, homeowner to be in there. Well, and pulled it out a little bit further um, to be able to communicate with this negative energy. And so we got up and we left. Um, I said, listen, I'll come back at a different time when the time is right, when you when you know, when you let us, they trusted us, they knew who we were. Uh, when, when you let us stay in the house by ourselves so we can deal with the situation. And I would, be, I would confront anything because I know that nothing can hurt me. And by the way, for all those people out there that believe that this negative energy can hurt you, I do not. I have been doing this for a long time and I have never been scratched, poked, although I want to be scratched and poked. I've never, um, yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> I've, never been, I've never been poked or anything like that. I don't get it. Well, I've, I've been poked and I've been shoved. I've never been scratched. Poor Eva over here just prays that it'll happen to her. <laughs> yeah. I, the, the only place I've been poked is on Facebook. I don't, you know, oh. I don't, I, I've never been, I've never been touched. Now I can see, mind you, when I do my readings, it's like watching a movie. It's a, it's a, an entire video I can watch. I can, I can tell you exactly what but they're wearing um, everything. So it's just like watching a, a, a movie on TV. That's how I do my readings. I watch the movie. Wow. So you don't get blips and, uh, you know, splashes of information or flashes of information. You're just actually literally watching the movie play back to I, I No, they talk to me. as the movie. I'm in the movie. Cool. So yeah, well, it is it is pretty cool. Um, I so I'm I'm like in the movie. They're talking to me. It's like you have to decipher kind of what they're saying too. It's only what, like watching Charlie Chaplin, Chaplin, Charlie Chaplin. Yeah, yeah uh, doing um, almost like charades sort of thing, and I can hear him at the same time. But I have to decipher: does it mean this or does it mean this? Because when you, if, a psychic medium, for all of you that might be listening, that our psychic message, you'll know what I'm talking about, um, a message can mean more than one thing. Yeah, sometimes they come through as representations of something else, meaning something totally different to the person receiving the message. Yeah, I get you. Yeah, so I have to determine what that means. I did a reading today, and I said to the person, why do I feel that you're unemployed? Um, well, coincidentally, she was unemployed, but she looking to open her own business and I said I be, before she told me that she was looking to own business I said but I see you being self-employed so how do I, I often question myself that when I was mentioning gifted innocence in the book that is in the book that I don't grasp the concept and if any one of you people can tell me how you know what you do please go on castleparanormalresearch.com email me and let me know for sure how you know it. You can actually watch, I think I have about 38 to 40 videos of paranormal research on my website that you can actually go and watch uh, from Sacramento's Manor Investigations to The Hanging Tree in Long Island, there's uh, Pilgrim State Psychiatric Centers. There's a lot of places that we've been on Long Island, Connecticut, all those places that's done uh, paranormal investigating. Yeah, I've actually watched a couple of your videos, and they are very intriguing. Um, again, can you tell us the name of this book? I just want the viewers to be able to have a heads up before you rattle the name and the author of this book up. By the way, um, it's, I just wanted to mention that it's very nice to be on an interview where I can actually uh, not have to get completely dressed up. It's so nice sometimes not to be on video. So thank you. I didn't even have to do my hair today, which is really nice. Hey, there you go. Hey, we're so laid back here. It's not even funny. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, I'm totally bald anyway, so it doesn't matter. There you um, go. <laughs> so tell us again what the name of this book is that you're, that you're featured in. Uh, the name of the book is Gifted Innocence. A Parent's Guide for Spir Spiritually Gifted Children, and it's by Sydney Sherman. Uh, you guys can actually find her at sydneysherman.net. Um, 
but you can you can type in Sydney Sherman on the uh, on Facebook, and you'll be able to find her on there. It's an amazing book about children with gifts and growing up with the gift. Um, and I think almost everybody can relate at one point in this book. Yeah, we'll we'll go ahead and post that link on on our page, Tipa Online. But for the listeners, again, you know, be sure and look this book up and give it a good read. It's uh, filled full of helpful information for people that may be going through the same scenario. Yeah, um, and if and if you are going through the same scenario and you want to communicate. With, we, we also have, I, mean, I think, uh, you know, Tip and, and we've been friends for a little while on Facebook and communicating back and forth and posting. So, I mean, if you, you, we have a group page, we have a Facebook page. Uh, be sure you can visit our Cast the Paranormal Facebook page. We, uh, we post um, probably more than we should, um, but we, we have all sorts of information on stones, on investigations, on appearances, uh, where where are you guys located anyway? We're in Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City, Utah. Yeah. Wow, you, I, well, that's pretty good. That's pretty far away then, I guess, huh? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, anybody feel like driving by this weekend? We have a grand opening that we're going to be in uh, on Sunday. But no, seriously, we we have a lot of information on our site. We're just not a typical Facebook site that just throws up. Every once in a while, we update it uh, a couple times a day with uh, informative information for people. And you can actually ask questions, and we will answer you the same day. Oh, brilliant. And that will be helpful for our followers. And again, can you tell us what your Facebook website is? No, but uh, I'll look it up right now. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I stumped you, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, no. And I really don't know, but it's it's www.facebook.com slash Casper Paranormal. Brilliant. Okay, and we will post the link also on our website so that you can find your way to Chris's websites. Okay. Find my way, because I haven't found my way yet, but I'm getting there. <laughs> um, also, uh, just so you know, I, I do a lot of work with uh, people who have lost and stuff like that. Uh, for instance, the other day, somebody who uh, talks to me on a fairly regular basis, her first name is Lisa, she just texted me last night, I guess just before I was about to go to sleep, and said, there's a dog been missing for a couple of days. I don't know what to do. I'm beside myself. I need to know, what is your feelings about this dog? And I said, don't worry, the dog will be back tomorrow. Well, she just posted on my page today I can actually read it word for word because it's right in front of me now. Uh, Lisa is her first name, and it says, I was getting anxiety over looking for this five-pound dog that my older neighbors lost in the woods for a week. We set up traps, got people to help us look and put signs up. The outcome did not look good. So I turned to Chris last night with one question, and he said the dog will be home tomorrow. And the dog was. Safe and sound. Wow. I read that yeah. post, and that was that's awesome. Yeah, I and those are the things, those are the kind of posts we have all the time on here. Um, feel free to actually go onto my link also and click on um, Readings by Chris, and it's uh, the uh, email form that you can fill out to be updated on all our things that are happening. Okay, brilliant. Yeah, that chip monkey type thing or whatever it is. I don't know what it is. <laughs> that monkey mail or whatever it's called. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so on your paranormal um, side of things, what type of locations do you prefer to investigate? Whether it be residential, commercial properties, you know, the top uh, 10 you know haunted what? locations I, in your area or what? I'm going to tell you, I, I get... It, it's all over the place. Abandoned buildings to residential homes. Matter of fact, we just put up a video about a child seeing her grandmother and all that, you know. So we investigated the house. Uh, we found absolutely nothing. We found it to be, not, I shouldn't say that. We, we, we found it the child to have a bit of a gift, all right? But I got to tell you, we also found um, no paranormal activity in the home. We got an emergency call. Doors are opening and closing. Cabinets are opening and closing. We walk in there, there's nothing there. Really? 
I mean, I, I want to go. I want to see people's heads spin. I want to see all that cool <laughs> stuff. I don't see that stuff. I mean, where, where is that? Where, that's on Ghost Hunters on TV. Um, no, I, everybody can, everybody says to me, you got to come to my house. It's an emergency. There's demons climbing on the wall. There's the doors are flapping open and closing. The the drawers are opening and closing. I walk in there. It's a regular house. I'm like, really? There's nothing going on here. Well, we put our meters up and they have these all fancy uh, ovens and stuff. Yeah, you get, your, your hair's going to fall out. How do you think I'm, I'm bald? I'm doing all these investigations <laughs> where all these modern technology is going on. Yeah, sometimes uh, the way that the paranormal shows run on TV, they're so glorified, things are happening continuously, and you get to a location that's purportedly haunted, and you get there, and there's nothing going on. <laughs> I, want you, I want you to do me a favor. Everybody that's listening tonight, all 50,000 of them, uh, I would like to, uh, for you to watch like a Ghost Hunters or something like that, and you're going to see, they're going to say, what was that? What was that? What? But there's really nothing there. Yeah, that was the furnace turning on or the air conditioner turning on. <laughs> right, even even if they're out in the woods. Yeah, that was somebody was talking the in the campground next to us. <laughs> right, they, you don't yeah. see anything. There was never anything there. So, I mean, they spent all the rest of the half hour show looking for it, uh, but it, it just wasn't there. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm a skeptic, and I want to see I want to see Johnny's head spinning around with, you know, that projectile vomit coming out and showing me that <laughs> this guy needs an exorcism. I have a friend of ours, and he is a friend of ours. He, I, I'm not going to say his name, but he does exorcisms all the time. I'm like, really, dude? You do exorcisms? All, like the bed's lifting up off the floor. and I, I want that ride. I want, I, I, want to, I want to be able to see my bed lift off the floor and spin around. I mean, the only time I do that is if I drink a whole bottle of wine. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. And it sometimes goes like that. So if anybody has a great story and would love to come on to our show, please come to CasperParanormalResearch.com, email me, contact me through there, tell me, I'll have you on my show. I'll debate with you. I, 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 as you can tell, I like to debate and talk. So uh, be sure to come on and tell me. Tell me when you you know you were scratched or you were lifted off or you're thrown ten feet by a demon. Uh, I want to know about that. I'll come and visit you if I have to. Oh, there you go. So so how can they actually get in touch with you? Just message you off of your face Facebook site or off of the your easy, website? The e yeah, the easiest way to contact me is my cell phone. I'm very open. Six three one eight. Three eight two one six six. If you're looking for a psychic medium reading, not a fake one, guys, a real reading, you can call me at that number six three one eight three eight two one six six. If you want to leave a message, you can actually go on www.facebook.com/slash Casper Paranormal. Now that I know it, or my my website, which is CasperParanormalResearch.com. Brilliant. Well, so uh, have you got any events coming up or, or investigations coming up that you'd like to share with us? I have a lot of events, actually. I was just looking at them. I'm like, really? Um, <laughs> you I too. Do a lot of, uh, I do a lot of home gatherings. Uh, a lot of people will call them psychic parties. Yeah. Uh, um, just another one of my things that I can't call them parties. I just, you know, calling a party, speaking to dead people, a party, I just have an issue with. So I call them gatherings. Um, but we also have a grand opening at Island Living in Santa Mauritius, Long Island, New York. And that will be, uh, she opens up at 11. The party actually starts at 2. But I'll be doing readings there um, each and every Monday um, and as often as I possibly can. Also, we'll be at special, uh, what day is that, by the way? Oh, that's this, this Sunday coming up. But August 29th, I'll be at Specialty Lotions and Potions. I'm losing my voice. Uh, <laughs> in in Bayshore, New York, um, on 11 East Main Street in, in Bayshore. And we'll be doing readings, psychic medium readings there uh, on 
August 29th at 6 p.m. Brilliant. Hey, Chris, can you tell us a little bit about your uh, TV program? Yeah, it's called the Casper Paranormal View. Uh, on every Monday night uh, during the normal winter hours at 7 p.m. And every other week, uh, you can find it um, also on live stream, the Casper Paranormal View. We've had that show three years now. Uh, we've been running, it's a video paranormal show, and we do free tarot card readings. We talk about paranormal. People call in and tell us their stories. We have authors on, we have um, different paranormal groups on. Delwood Paranormal comes on to our show a lot in New Jersey. Uh, we have Second Sight, uh, which is a very popular uh, web show also. Um, he comes on to our show. So anybody can call and tell us about their paranormal experiences, and then we'll um, either argue about them or uh, have fun with them. <laughs> okay, and, and where can they find this show at? Um, I actually post it. You'll find it on my Facebook page, uh, the one that I mentioned a thousand times. Okay. Um, and well, I, it's, we're going to bug you and have right you do it a thousand and one. <laughs> listen, the easiest way to find my show is to go on CasperParanormalResearch.com, click on the About Us button, and on the bottom right-hand corner is a link straight to our show. You just click on the picture of me and Angelo. It'll take you directly to our show. Brilliant. So well, make, sure, make sure you come... Uh, at at uh, like five two, sign into the chat room, and then um, we will start promptly at seven o'clock, and it's over between eight eight fifteen. Brilliant. Well, we'd like to thank you. Um, maybe we ought to do the reverse role since this is an audio. Yours is a video. <laughs> maybe yeah, we'll you know, maybe we'll call in I, on I you. <laughs> Would you like, we, I would love to have you guys come on. Um, we would definitely like to have you guys come on to our show and, and talk about what you guys do as far as uh, paranormal investigating and your show and stuff like that. Uh, it would definitely be great. Sounds like a plan. I would love to have you on. Brilliant. Well, have you got any other questions for Chris tonight, Eva? No, I don't think so. Uh, it's been a great pleasure talking to you, though. Unfortunately, well, it was, not unfortunately. It was a great pleasure talking to both of you, but I could not get onto the chat. Um, so I couldn't, like if anybody was chatting, I apologize if I didn't answer, or if they weren't chatting, then, hey, what's up with you guys that you couldn't talk to me? Um, <laughs> but I, I um, yeah, I couldn't get on. I'm trying to find it, and I had the link posted, and, of course, I got lost, and, and now... My my, um, oh he, <laughs> my partner just uh, texted me the link uh, to it. <laughs> That's funny. Angelo's always there for me. Thank you, Angelo. Um, but yeah, so no, I don't. I don't have anything other than uh, I really appreciate you guys having me on your show. Uh, I appreciate you uh, always posting, uh, and we try to come on to, to your. Uh, I don't know if you ever see my post. But I do post things onto uh, tip online and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm always running behind you, sharing your stuff. So <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're on there. We we love it. We love we love being able to deal with everybody and hear everybody's stories, even if they have to do with scratching and mauling and the eyes being poked out and stuff like that. You know, uh, all that stuff is fun. But um, I got to tell you, if you come out to my show, just be ready because. If, if anybody's going to say about the angels and about all that, I'm, I'm going to come back at you and be like, really? Well, if you believe in an angel, you need to convince me that there's angels and there's all this around. I just have a problem. Gee, I, I'm I, sending I, Eva I right over. An angel. My mother has. My mother's been on my show. She saw an angel. Yeah, well, my girl next to me says that she thinks angels are real too. And you know what? I got to respect everybody, but you know what? I haven't seen it, so I can't believe in it. Well, you know, you're you're exactly what we are. We respect your opinions. We want to hear your information, um, share your stories. May not be our opinion, but you know, we're putting it out there for everyone to hear. Exactly.
Exactly. I'm going to say one more thing. I had a, had a pastor come on to our show. What we do, what I do, is the demons work. According to the Bible, that's the way it is. Uh, so we went on cable vision here in, in Long Island, and we went on TV, and, and I debated this issue with him. Like, really, why is it evil that I can speak to somebody, but yet you priests can speak to, you know, like Jesus, who actually walked the earth and died, just like, you know, your Uncle Paul did, you know? Uh, I don't understand it. So we have this debate about that also, that we're, that we're only supposed to listen to the Bible. I find that to be very narrow-minded and closed-minded, you know? Well, you know, and you don't differ any from our opinions here. You know, there's there's other explanations. There's, you know, I mean, w we had the same conversation a couple weeks ago with a person that was in the chat room telling us that because we didn't believe in his God, that we were hypocrites and there's no way we could be seeing anything paranormal. Now, well, although I do respect his opinion, they were statements as far as we could tell without uh, having room for a rebuttal. We're here to discuss different opinions, different points of view, and and learn from one another. Not not right. to knock you, each other down. Right. You can you can uh, respectfully agree to disagree. I, I just w I'm going to close on this one note. I post on what they call I don't know if you've ever heard of the patch, but we have what they call like a West Isle patch here. It's a place for local businesses to advertise. Um, so I advertise my readings because I'm a business and and I advertise readings by Chris. Uh, so one guy posted that he, he uh, put Leviticus on there and that it's evil to talk about, you know, to, to do what I do and all this other stuff. So I said, please call me so we can discuss this. Well, he did. And we had about a half hour, extremely intelligent conversation. Um, and at the end, we both respected each other's opinions. So... I posted again on the West Isle patch, but somebody below me posted that they were having a readings party, and he posted his thing again. I, as I mentioned before, it's evil that you should. And then he texted me on my phone. He goes, "Chris, that was not for you. That was for the other person that um, posted about their party." And I wrote, "LOL, no problems." Um, and he also said to me, "Now get this. This is the great part." He was totally against what I did, but after having a conversation with him and me stressing how I love to help people, he said that he wants me to work with him with the church together to be able to help people. Now, this is two people. With, like, I don't have a, a different opinion of him. He had a negative opinion about me, but I was able to be able to talk to him in a way to say, hey, we both have the same job. We just go about it different ways. And I think he got it. And he, and now we're going to help each other. Wow, that's, that's, that's amazing. Awesome. Yeah. See, and that's kind of you know what we're what we're all about too. We may differ in our our methods, techniques, or whatever, um, you know. But res be respectful of one another's feelings, and by all means, try to learn something from the experience. I mean, if you can walk away with learning one thing, you know, you've enriched your life beyond measure. That's right. That's what my Facebook quote says if you look on it, helping one person at a time. Brilliant. Yep. Well, we'd like to thank you very much, Chris, for taking time out of, I know it's getting kind of late back there where you are. So oh, this like... is well past my bedtime. I'm usually <laughs> in bed by nine. That's what, that's another... Those, those, like, 2 o'clock dead time on the ghost hunter shows and everything? Uh -huh. Like, really? Ghosts don't come out during the day, guys? Really? What do exactly. They do? Oh, <laughs> well, we'd like to thank you very much for coming on the show. I hope you had a great experience with us like we did with you. Oh, absolutely. I enjoyed it very much, guys. Thank you very much for having me. 2 Tylenol p.m., and I can go to sleep now. Okay. Yep. Good night, my good, friend. Good night. <laughs> good night. Thank you, everybody. Have a great night. You too. Bye-bye now. Bye. Wow, is he fascinating or what? Yep. I could probably have him back on the show and listen to him for another hour. Mm-hmm, me too. 
Well, we learned that he is a great psychic medium and that he has a lot of projects going on. So if you guys are in the area, any of our listeners, be sure to look on his website for the information on his upcoming events. It sounds like he's got a lot going on there. And also for his uh, TV broadcast, it sounds pretty interesting. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to flip the tables on him and maybe join him for a show. Yep. I think that'd be awesome. So let's end the night by talking about our upcoming events again um, to let everybody know that's listening. If you're in the Salt Lake area, we're holding an event, a open ghost hunting event at Rio Grande train station here in downtown Salt Lake City. And if you're in the area, please be sure to visit TIPA online or Paranormal Chaos Investigations and join the event if you would like to join us. We also have coming up on Saturday, September 21st, another event held out in Fairfield, Utah at Camp Floyd. The cost of this is 25 per person and you can pay at the door. The event will also be posted on both TIPA Online and Paranormal Chaos. Have anything to add, Eva? Nope. Just come out and join us on the events investigations. Love to have you. Yeah, we'd love to see all these new faces and some old faces too. So we're looking forward to seeing everybody that's already joined and hopefully you'll be joining us too. On that note, we're out of here. Good night, everybody. Good night.